Remember, remember, the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and rot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder, treason, and rot. Isn't today the 6th? Jeff, it's the 6th. I, I know what you're doing, but it's the 6th of November. Yesterday is the 5th. Okay, so I have to wait a whole year to do the quote again? I wanted to intro the show. I told you guys, like, the whole reason we started the podcast. I want to intro it with V for Vendetta. It sounds badass. Well, but... I mean, let's pump the brakes on that one, even. <laughs> All right. Welcome in to the Bro 4 Squad podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Hornacek. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have not listened to us before, or even if you have, we are a bunch of bros talking superheroes, movies, in superhero movies. Now that my badass intro is over with and was not ruined at all, went off without a hitch, just like I planned it, let's go around and meet the fellow bros. First, we go into the lab with our own mad scientist, a man who claims he is actually the person who invented the board game, Guess Who? Brian Banner. Brian, welcome. I did invent the board game, Guess Who? But it was made, I think, before you were even born. No, it wasn't. Did okay. you ever play it before you were born? Maybe he's a clone of Brian Banner. God damn it. And finally, our enforcer in the paint, someone who last weekend threatened the 15-year-old ticket taker at the movies we were with and said he would, quote, attack him so hard he would not know pain if he tried to take his 3D glasses, Matt Geiger. Matt, what's up, man? He pointed me to the wrong theater. He should be shunned from America. The kid it was like a sophomore in high school just trying to make money for, like, gas. That's I don't no understand. excuse. All right, well, on to the show. Uh, guys, we like to break everything down into three topics. The chest day, which is our biggest topic. The protein shake, which is our second biggest topic. And then our do you even lift bruh segment where we bruh? find our questions from across the internet. I'm going to be very honest with you today. There's a lot of news stories out there, so forget chest day. We're not, we're not doing that because we can just do whatever the hell we want on this show. So instead, we have three delicious little protein shakes that we are going to divide the show into. Like and our first story comes to us from our friends over at geekmotivation.live, and whew, it's a big one. CNBC is reporting that 21st Century Fox, a multinational media corporation and a parent company of 20th Century Fox, may be up for sale to the Walt Disney Company. Heard of them? Discussions have occurred the past few weeks that have suggested Fox's surprising move has a lot to do with their rumored plans to restructure the company and move more towards sports and news. Now, should this happen, this could raise the possibility the, that the Avengers, owned by Disney, the X-Men and Fantastic Four, licensed by Fox, and Spider-Man, licensed to Sony, could all fight alongside one another in a single shared universe. And in addition, it would mean that Disney would finally get the distribution rights to Star Wars, which Fox has indefinitely. So, Banner, we'll go to you first. This is just a rumor at this point, but that's what we like to do. We're basically like the cheerleading locker room in high school except much less popular we just want to spread rumors and start chaos what are your thoughts on this potential news first off speak for yourself i am just as popular as i was when i was a cheerleader in high school second You're off i i i really hope this doesn't happen um would i love to see a shared universe where we have all these superheroes and all these characters and and the possibilities are endless if this were to happen. Uh, but I hope it doesn't because that's what makes the MCU great. That's why we have the DCEU, um, in my opinion, on an uptick right now. And Fox, albeit they're on a downtick if you take out Logan and, and Deadpool, um, as far as the X-Men franchise goes, we need them all to compete against each other. And if Disney and Marvel Studios owns all of them, then... I mean, they're not going to be as good. They're, they they can get very complacent with it. We're going to have lots of cool stories, but the movies themselves aren't going to be as good. <clears throat> Geiger, what do you think? Yeah, two-sided coin for me. I mean, yeah, I would love to see Magneto v. Iron Man or, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. And especially there's a lot of cool comic arcs that are opened up. In some people's opinion, probably the best comic arcs are X-Men with other characters. But I'm going to agree with Banner here. Name your favorite X-Men movie. I mean, everyone's is probably Logan now. Disney won't do that. They won't have an R-rated superhero movie as of right now. The only reason they would have is to compete with Fox, who are they going to buy out. Um, MCU, honestly, man, that ball was rolling so hard that even Disney couldn't fuck it up whenever they um, 
they got him on the merger. But I applaud Disney for that, but we don't want Disney to rule the whole world. Uh, actors, directors, if like an act own a ton of these other franchises, and like Banner said, competition. You got to have competition. If they just rule the world, they can just do whatever the hell they want, and no one's really pressuring them or anything. You need competition. I I agree that Fox has fucked up X Men, but if you watch the first three, I like them tonally. I like the story; it makes sense. And most of the time, I think they got the cast right too on the casting for sure. So I'm the only one here that wants this to happen. I was I'm shocked by this. I thought everybody would be like, yeah. "Here's the scary part." It's though. badass to think about. Uh, if, if I would had, love to have like the Hulk and Wolverine go at it, but like make out or like fight. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing: it if would be Disney really wants, poppy. X Men would be really poppy. That's the thing. If Disney wants to buy Fox, they're gonna buy Fox. Like yeah. that's <laughs> the end bit. But if Disney buys Fox, what's next? They're gonna buy you and me. They're gonna own. They're gonna own us. They're gonna own. Every- this is Skynet, people. And you know what? I thought those movies were pretty awesome when robots took over the world. So yeah, go go for it, Disney. The selfish fan in me says yes. I want all these characters together on screen. But you guys are right. A monopoly in terms of filmmaking and intellectual properties. I don't know if that's the best thing. And maybe we just need to be protected from ourselves. But if Fox is, is anything. Or if Fox really just cares about the money in this, I don't know if they'll do it because as long as I can distribute the Star Wars movies, I'm good. I, I don't know what the deal would look like, but I mean, I'd be happy with that. Any last thoughts before we move on to the coolest protein shake topic we've ever I mean, had? Disney already owns Banner. He spends more money at Disney World and Disneyland than he does on like groceries for food and like <laughs> dental hygiene. Yeah, I don't need them taking like X Men is the one thing that Disney hasn't taken from me. And if they own it, like, I might as well just sign my paycheck over to Mr. Disney, Walt himself, even though he's dead. Is he, though? Well, I th- he might be frozen. Back. That's true. Exactly. If Cap can do it for 70 years, Walt Disney's going to come back. All right, guys. Our next eight protein- packs a day that he smoked is, isn't going to kill him. No, that was before cigarettes were bad for you, remember? Oh, my bad. All right. Our second protein shake topic. Super important, guys. Everyone shut up and listen. The ongoing feud between Fast and Furious franchise stars, that stars Geiger, Tyrese Gibson and Dwayne Johnson has escalated, with Gibson announcing last week that he will not appear in the upcoming ninth film if Dwayne Johnson is a member of the cast, saying on Instagram, quote, I'm sorry to announce that if Dwayne is in Fast 9, and might I just add he misspelled Dwayne's first name, such disrespect, there will be no more Roman Pierce. You mess with family and my daughter's survival. I mess with yours. Dot, dot, dot. Close your eyes, dude. You're a clown. End quote. Now, since this initial proclamation by Tyrese and Roman Pierce, he's backed off his comments a little bit. But I feel like he's a man who, when he digs in the sand, he stands tall. And this, that was sort of an allusion to the walking tall with Rock. With the Rock. Geiger, we'll go to you first. This is hot. I know you want to get in on this. This is basically shattering everyone's perception of Hollywood. What do you think about this news, and how, do you, how have you been sleeping? Yeah, since this dropped, uh, this hasn't happened yet. So I don't really give a shit about this story until The Rock calls him a jabroni or ask him what he thinks, and he says it doesn't fucking matter what he thinks. But Tyrese saying that he wants <laughs> out of this project is like me saying that I'm going to quit drinking every Sunday morning when I'm just hungover as fuck from Friday and Saturday night. It's not going to happen. And also, what's his plan B? Unless he has some sequels in the tank that I don't know about, like Five Brothers or Baby Boy 2, Adolescent Boy. Why would they, why would they get an extra brother? In the they need two because one of them died. Or yeah, how about Baby Boy 2, Adolescent Boy, because he's not a baby anymore. He just needs to shut the fuck up because this is the only thing. I, I don't think he's in Transformers anymore. I don't know. I haven't seen the recent one. But he just needs to just know his role and shut his mouth. And it's Mr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson to him and everyone else. And spell it correctly, Tyrese. All right, Banner, what do you got? I I, I just don't get it because I thought The Rock was feuding with with Mark Sinclair. So now it's with Tyrese. Pay him some respect, damn it. It's Vin Diesel. Only his friends call him Mark Sinclair. And that's not you. Yeah, no, that's totally me. I I just don't understand what the big – deal is like you both are going to get paid gobs and gobs of money this can you not put that away for 
six to eight weeks to film this movie. It's not even like how many scenes really are they going to do together? Well, none if Tyrese has his way. Okay, he was if it's like four or five scenes, you're on set for like ten days together. That's jack shit. Put it away. This isn't going to make ten movies. I'm just telling you right now because The Rock's the only box office draw as of right now. And actually, last I heard, Michelle Rodriguez was even talking about leaving if they don't give the female characters a bigger role in the franchise. So, Well, it is 2017, so maybe they should think about that. If you're a fan of the Fast franchise like me, because they're fun, and the, the first one in Tokyo Drift, shut the fuck up, they're good movies, then you're scared. There's a good movie in there somewhere. Yeah, it's called The DVD is, is where the good movie is. Yeah. <laughs> It's called Wait Till Two More Come Out and Wait Till Fast Five. That's a good movie that was in Look, there. guys, brothers fight, and you know what tension and pressure – you know what pressure makes? Diamonds. Boom. See you guys summer of 2019 for Fast 9 because this movie's going to be awesome. All right. Our last protein shake topic now that we got the important one out of the way. Next week, our eyeballs get to feast on the DC superhero team-up movie Justice League finally hitting theaters in North America. And in what has started to become a bit of an annual tradition, DC's counterpart Marvel will drop their much-anticipated series, The Punisher, on Netflix the following day. So, what do we think about this strategy from both of them, and how awesome and badass is that weekend going to be? Because let's be honest, when they compete, we win. We're like the chick at the party who she puts out, and so every guy is buying her drinks to bring her drinks. Like, we basically win here. Geiger, we'll let you go first since you're the DC fan. Justice League and The Punisher coming out next weekend. What are your thoughts? Yes, I am, Jeff. Thanks for knowing that. As a paid DCU employee and a Boy Scout from 1996-1998, I will say that the MCU and Disney does this shit on purpose. They did it on BBS and dropped Daredevil 2 that fucking week. And now – and I understand about the shooting in Las Vegas and stuff, but they could drop this about any time. But they're dropping the week of Justice League. Now, it's kind of a chicken shit move, but – for real fans, I'm going to go to the real fan side of it, which I am. It's not like I'm going to go see Justice League and be like, man, I'm kind of superheroed out this week. I don't want to watch fucking Punisher for 10 hours. So as a fan, it's it's awesome. I mean, just like you know, a college football fan, you know, after number 10 plays number 12, I mean, yeah, I'm going to watch number 1 play number 8. So it's it's fucking awesome. It's You get the MCU, and t- like tonally, they match up because a DC movie – is more matched up to the Marvel Netflix than it is a uh, MCU movie, in my opinion. I have a feeling this Punisher series is going to be the most Matt Geiger thing Marvel's ever done. <laughs> Banner on. I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably love it more than Daredevil somehow. Wow, wow. that's going to be tough. Banner. I'm just going to go out and say, happy fucking birthday to me. So <laughs> my birthday is actually on Thursday when uh, Justice League gets dropped. So I'm going to see Justice League. We'll do our review. You guys should check that out. Going to catch a couple hours of sleep. I'm calling in sick the day after my birthday because who doesn't call in sick the day after their birthday? And I'm watching The Punisher all day. So about 24 hours after I see Justice League, I will have finished The Punisher series. Uh, As far as which one I'm more excited for, I think I'm going to say Justice League here just because I think it is more of a wild card in my opinion. I think Punisher, I know what I'm going to get. the Netflix shows are fantastic, and I know I'm going to like it. Justice League, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not. I think uh, ju- the DCU is on an uptick um, with uh, Wonder Woman coming out, and this, to me, looks visually awesome. I can't wait to see them really bring all these ki- characters together and, uh, and, and see what they can do. So I'm excited for Justice League, I think a little bit more than The Punisher. But with that being said, within 24 hours, I'm going to have both of them completed. Wow. It's good to set goals for ourselves. You know, like aim for the – shoot for the stars and if you fall, you land on a cloud. I just love the attention. I love Marvel and DC competing for my attention. And spoiler alert, they're both going to get it. What am I more excited for? I'm more excited for Just League just because nothing beats going to the theater where Geiger and I are so fucking nervous that the movie might suck that we sit there with our arms crossed and don't even enjoy it basically. Uh, and Punisher, while I think it's going to be incredible, and it, those of you who are friends of me, which is probably all to 2,800 of our Twitter followers, know that the Punisher is my favorite uh, Marvel character. But the Punisher d- does not look like a series that you're like, yeah, this is fun. It's one where you turn the lights off, you open up a bottle of Jack Daniels, and you turn your phone off. And in two days, your family and friends just hope that they hear from you again. 
So I wouldn't really say excited is the way to describe it, but I'm, it's exciting. That was a really dark place to go, but that's <laughs> what it does. That's the series. <clears throat> All right, guys, that does it for our protein shake. Before we dive into our last segment of the show, Banner, a uh, really serious question for you. Would you mind if I uh, open things up real quick? Yeah, bro. Do you even lift, bro? Bro. Bro, do you even lift? Do you even lift, bro? Bro, do you lift? And that brings us to our last segment of the show, our question answer segment where we dig up some of the best questions from around the internet. Do you even lift, bra? So here we go. Our first one that we found is from Christopher Martinez at CA Martinez 2 who asks, if you could be an MCU or DCEU character, which character would you be? Geiger, go first. Damian Wayne, bullet points for you. Trained by the League of Shadows, so he's a complete badass, and he gets knowledge from his dad, Bruce, so he's kind of leveled out there. He gets to be the third Robin, and I'm guessing uh, Talia breastfed him. Which is awesome because she has fantastic tits. So great, but I where in the DCEU is that in movie is he in? Oh, the DCU. He's in it. He'll be in it. Sorry, I was just doing DC comics. You just wanted to make that joke about Talia Al Ghul's breast, didn't you? Yeah. All right, Banner. I mean, I can't. I cannot be mad at you for that. That's just clever, Banner. Uh, I'm gonna go Iron Man. He's smart, he's awesome, he's badass, he gets laid a lot. That's pretty much me. Wow, you're really humble. You know, no no joke, Geiger, you know who Banner is in real life? It, he's Happy Hogan. Yeah, he is Happy Hogan. Fuck he has guys. so many Happy Hogan qualities to him. <laughs> you're trustworthy, you're always there, you would put yourself in your own movies, and I know that's kind of John Favreau, but case in point, he directed the first two Iron Man. Can I switch real quick? To keep with my tone, I'll be Scarlet Witch just so I can feel my tits all day. There. Okay. Yeah. Answer the question. Yeah, we. I have a feeling if we gave you a third answer, I bet I could pick who it would be. I'm going <laughs> to say Steve Olsen. Trevor. <laughs> Steve Trevor. He's a badass. I get to be Chris Pine. Spoiler alert in Wonder Woman. He died a hero, and Wonder Woman totally digged me, and we got it on, which I would not be shy about telling my war friends about. <clears throat> All right, our second question comes to us from Vernon Green at WV Glag, who wants to know, with the release of the new Star Wars movies, do you feel like too much is being revealed leading to borderline spoilers? Banner, you go first. What's been spoiled? Like the Death Star got blown up? Sorry, that happened 40 years ago. Spoilers? Spoilers, my bad. I don't think anything is getting spoiled. spoiled. I think that... It's great. I think that it's getting us talking about Star Wars. I mean, everything that we've talked about prior to to Lucasfilms being being sold off to Disney was speculation of, well, this is what could have happened, and this is what happened, or what if this happened? We're getting all of that now. I don't think anything's really been spoiled. Um, I think things are just getting explained better, and and kind of the the light is being illuminated on what events are taking place or haven't taken a place in that universe. Uh, Geiger actually has a good theory on what possibly could have been spoiled. Geiger, do you want to share yeah, this? Yeah, thank you for giving me back the ball so I can prove that I can read Twitter questions. Um, there's got to be a reason why they're doing an Obi-Wan movie, right? Like, I, I think he's all related to Grandpa. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I, I doubt he's a clone or anything like that, but there's no way he's Snoke. There's just got to be a reason they're doing an Obi-Wan movie. Just, I know Hugh and McGregor it makes sense in the story on his age because he was young during the prequels and now he's kind of older. So it makes sense. The they're doing, they're doing a Han Solo solo movie. So maybe he has another kid out there that we don't know. Maybe it could be Finn. Maybe he had uh, relations with an African American woman. I don't know, but there's gotta be reasons they're doing these characters, other characters. So maybe that's a little spoiler, but that's reading really deep into stuff for sure. Yeah, I can't add much to that, Vernon. I think it's a really interesting question. I'll just say this. As far as the um, – what, what are we calling these? The anthology movies? Is that what they're calling like the Boba Fetts? And, or sure, yeah. So I like the ones that are focused on a, a time period and not an individual person, meaning I think the concept of Rogue One is really cool. I don't care as much about Han Solo and Obi-Wan. So as far as spoilers, I don't – again, Vernon, if you're talking about that Obi-Wan Ray theory – that's an interesting one. Um, we'll ho pro hopefully know a lot more by the time the movie comes out to where it doesn't even matter. I so. don't think we will. I think I think that if Rey is lineage of Obi-Wan, we're not going to find it out in 
the saga, we're going to find it out in Obi-Wan's, um, in, in Obi-Wan's anthology. So it's not spoiling anything. Again, it's just clarifying other events that happen in the universe that happen maybe later on. But you, you don't think we'll find out Ray's lineage in episode eight or nine? I don't know. I think I, eight, definitely nine. I even think eight. I think they're lying. The only, the only, uh, the reason I think she's she's Obi Wan's too is that Skywalker's really wear their emotions on their sleeves. See Anakin, Luke, Leia. Uh, you know they they get angry sometimes. Kenobi's are pretty chill, and Ray is just pretty chill about everything in the first um, movie anyway. Yeah, the Skywalkers are like Ron Artest or Matt. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know if she's really like Ron Artest, but <laughs> you mean Meta World Peace? No, no, I don't, actually. All right, our next question comes to us from Michael Beltran at Mickey Bell, who asks, do you have movies you watch on specific dates? Example, I watch V for Vendetta every 5th of November. First off, great reference, Michael. Nice. Love that movie. Hope you appreciate the top of the show. I'll go first here. Uh, v for Vendetta is super underrated. I, Geiger, this is probably one you're going to say too. This is not unique to me. I'm not special because of this. But I always watch Christmas Vacation around, guess when? Christmas. Uh-huh. I always watch the original Saw around Halloween. And every time that I think of my ex wife, Rachel, who left me, uh, return my text messages, Rachel, I like to pop in 500 Days of Summer. A great movie. <laughs> Having your heart broken and ripped out on the floor. And stomped on a couple hundred times. Uh, Geiger, how about you? Yeah, every time I uh, fuck Jeff's ex, Rachel, I watch Swordfish. um, Because she kind of looks like Halle Berry. Also, uh, US Open Weekend, I watch Tin Cup. uh, Like Jeff said, but I actually do on Black Friday watch Christmas Vacation with a six-pack of Shiner Cheer. I go to Vegas once a year, so I'll watch Ocean's Eleven. And any time I take a vacation by an ocean, I watch Banner, This Is Your Segway. I'm sorry? You wasn't paying attention. Pirates of the Caribbean. Banner. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I just watch Pirates of the Caribbean like every yeah. Just so every practice. I, I watch Pirates of the Caribbean like at least once a week, so I, I missed that one, sorry. Uh I watch a Christmas story every Christmas time and die hard around Christmas every single year. And this is kind of a weird one, but uh Fourth of July weekend, I watch the Captain America trilogy. Wow, nice. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, well, you learn something new every day. What about Shark Week? Uh, I don't watch anything for Shark Week, actually. Um, but I do love Jaws. I actually. So how do you watch Deep Blue Sea like twice a year? Yeah, like, Deep Blue Sea, we did a movie commentary on where you said you watch it three or four times a year. Were you lying? Just because I don't watch it during Shark Week doesn't mean I can't watch it. What else would you watch that piece of shit? Makes no, makes no <laughs> damn sense. I just watch it. It's like a rainy day movie. <laughs> All right. We have been the Bro Force Squad. For our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger and the mad scientist, Brian Banner. I am Jeff Hornacek. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at Bro Force Squad. Like us on Facebook, Bro Force Squad Podcast. It's four words. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube, Bro Force Squad. Three words. If you leave us an iTunes review, we will read the shit out of it on our show. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. And as always, whenever you have access to that handy-dandy internet thing, check us out on bro4squad.com for our squad blog, our bro hall of fame, and all of our other content. For that, we will see you guys next time.